Hey everyone and welcome to ExtremeRigs.net. I'm Strand and today we're going to be looking at some of the water block offerings from, for the GTX 980. Although this looks like a non-reference card, this is still a reference PCB. This is the EVGA Superclock model with the ACX cooler. However, the circuit board is still reference. Um, and so the, the water blocks we'll be looking at are reference compatible water blocks. And the one we'll be looking at today comes from Aqua Computer in Germany. Aqua Computer have been around for quite a while, and this is the block they sent us for review. They have a few different versions. This is the copper uh, with a stainless steel plate. Um, and they also do a nickel plated version because copper does tend to tarnish. And in addition, instead of the steel plate, they have one with a plexi window here, which looks very, very sexy. We lo love their nickel plexi blocks. Uh, this, however, is a little slim, slimmer. You can see this would almost be like a single slot kind of uh, block, except that the card itself has a, a DVI stack that makes it a dual slot, so it doesn't really matter in that sense. So the block itself does not cover the entire PCB. Uh, it's not what we would call the XXL style, but it's attractive and it's different to most of the other looks. So if you're looking for a unique kind of look, uh, this has that going for it. In terms of the thermal pads, uh, you can see there's quite a few different areas that Aqua Computer cover. And you'll also notice there's no thermal pads on the memory section. Uh, Aqua Computer is the only manufacturer that doesn't do that. And instead they design the block with enough tolerance that you can use thermal interface material to cool the RAM modules. Theoretically, if this gets close enough, that would give much better cooling on the memory. What we tend to find is that the pressure is not quite equal across the entire block, and so some memory modules don't, well, they need more TIM than others, and so aren't going to be as well cooled. It doesn't really matter. Uh, the main VRMs are in this section here, and what we found generally in the past is that Aqua Computer, if they can get enough pressure on the VRM section, does very well on VRM cooling, and we think this is because they use thin thermal pads and that they have very good quality thermal pads. Um, you'll also notice the black bridge up here. We're going to talk more about that in a little bit, but you'll notice two ports on this side, two ports on the other, let's put that up there, there you go. Well, I have so much coordination today, there you go. You can see, yeah, so two ports either side. So you have some options in how you hook it up. Now, the interesting thing that Aqua Computer did this time that they haven't done before is to give you a little mini backplate. And you're like, mini backplate? What the fuck is that? Well, this is a mini backplate. Um, yeah. So the problem, AM, not AMD, but the problem Aqua Computer had on the 290X block was that they couldn't get enough pressure on the VRMs unless they used a backplate. So rather than giving you a full backplate always, they have decided to give you this little backplate instead. And it's kind of weird, not just because it's small, but there's also these um, little rubber strips they give you in this little baggie here of stuff. And that kind of puts extra pressure. So basically what you do, these there's two of these, I'm only going to show you one. They sit on there in between the two and then you're going to clamp it and this just kind of distributes the pressure across the plate, you know, beyond just where the screws are. Now, you know, you can see this is quite thick. There's also washers in there to stop you compressing it too far. So this plate ends up sticking quite far off the circuit board. And in addition, you'll see there's this little um, section sticking out. This is bent over. And that's in order to, you know, give some resistance to bending. So it really helps to keep the card straight through that BRM section while giving much higher pressures to the thermal pads. So that gives great performance, but this thing does stick out because this bend is not towards the card, it's actually away from it. Let me show you. So, if this is your card, 
it sticks out like so. Let me try and line that up for you. There you go. So you can see it's going to stick out more. So it's a bit of a puzzle why they would do that rather than making it this way so it kind of goes over the top of the card or something. But that is what they did. So compatibility wise, this is a problem. We found that we couldn't put the card in the first PCI slot um, on X79 boards. And it's probably true of X99 too because uh, right where the screws were attaching and they stick out because they're button heads, uh, that would hit the extra RAM, sorry, the DIM slot, the end of the DIM slots on the ASUS RAM page 4. So that's not ideal. Um, so it does kind of limit you in where you can put the card. Uh, we also found the same problem, although it interfered at different spots, with the active backplate. Now, um, this one comes with the block, but Apple Computer also sell active and passive versions of the backplate. So let me pull the backplate out. You can see what the deal with that is. So this is the uh, backplate itself, ignore the parts falling off. Um, and this would be almost the same as the passive one. The passive one removes these standoffs, but the actual black part is the same. You'll notice there's some grey gunk in here that's left over Tim that I haven't cleaned because I did not prepare adequately for the video. Um, on the back, uh, this is the part that actually touches the card. You'll see two uh, thermal pad strips, one of which is kind of wandered off here, but it should be on this other groove. Um, and so these give extra cooling to the VRM section. You'll also see um, not all of these machined areas go all the way through. So some of the screws, some of the mounting screws are hidden and we like that. We don't like every screw to come through the back. There are still quite a few though. Now the thing to notice with that, like we were talking about compatibility, let's put it up here against the wall. You can see that's still quite thick for backplate. And there's also these little plastic standoffs, one of them fell off earlier. And so this just on its own, whether it's an active or passive mode, uh, still has compatibility problems. So if we measure this real quick with our handy dandy calipers, we'll see exactly what that is. So that, the total thickness from the circuit board, my goodness, is it really? That's measuring 6.15 millimeters thick, which is really thick. You know, and that's just, that is the thinnest, you know, the most you're going to be able to clamp down is all the way to these um, standoffs. So basically 6.2 millimeters thick. It's really thick. I mean, that's, that's what, a quarter of an inch. So like I said, that is the, pa the passive backplate. But if you get the active one, what you also get is a new bridge. And so you're going to... Well, how you do it is you attach your block to the PCB and then you attach the back plate and then you take the bridge off and you replace it with this one. And so you see this heat pipe here. That heat pipe connects to this groove in there. Well, it's more like this. But there we go. Um, so, you know, any heat on that back plate is going to transfer to the heat pipe. And then the heat pipe, it's hard to see in there, but you can just see it. Um, it's exposed slightly on both, both ports. So ideally, if you have the water or coolant or whatever you're using running over it, that means that the heat from the back plate gets transferred to the coolant. So in other words, it should help with cooling. And it does. We'll, we'll talk about that later. But it also limits your options. Like we said before, there's two inputs and two outputs. So if you go from the side where the um, heat pipe is in the way of the flow, you're going to do better than if you use the input and output ports where it's not in the flow. Because if there's no flow passing over it, it's not going to do a good job of cooling. So bear in mind, this also restricts 
the choice of ports you're going to use. So enough about the actual design, let's go on to the actual thermal performance. Uh, first off, let's talk about restriction. Uh, this was, you know, like 80% of the other blocks, this was very good on restriction. It was very similar to that other 80%. Uh, and so we approve of the restriction, nothing to really say there. Um, in terms of thermal performance, core cooling, um, you know, as you'd have been able to tell, a lot of the focus has been on the BRM cooling. So as we can see in this thermal data, uh, the core cooling was near the tail end. So it wasn't the worst performer, but it certainly was close. Having said, well, <clears throat> having said all of that, the performance was still good. Um, you know, we, we are being picky. A lot of these results are so close and, you know, so close to almost nothing that, you know, they're very acceptable anyway. So when we say that it's at the bottom of the group, it's not necessarily saying it's a bad thing. Well, I mean, it's obviously could be better. Anyway, so let's move on to the VRM cooling. Um, here is where the block really shines. You know, we have this active backplate design. But even without it, even just using that mini weird backplate thing, the block does very well. And we think that's because of the thermal pads. Um, so VRM cooling exceptional, I mean, way better than any, anything anyone else had done. Um, and so overall, that's really where the block shines. Yes, the core cooling is okay and it could be better. And we hope that Aqua Computer focus on that next time. But this block is really about uh, the VRM cooling, that's really the story there, and it does what it says. The active uh, backplate does help, but honestly the temperatures with the regular mini backplate are good enough that you really don't need it. So it's only if you want the looks, if you want the last ounce in performance, then, then by all means get that. Uh, we love the looks, we love the quality of the block. Overall it was great, and the only thing we can really fault is the compatibility and, you know, just wishing that core cooling was just a little bit better. Otherwise, though, a great block. So that's it from me for now. Uh, we'll be back with more 980 blocks and with more reviews in general. So subscribe to the channel if you like what we're up to.